Hello everybody. So now we shall be discussing practice questions in NEET crash course from the chapter ecosystem. The first question says when a habitat is subdivided into parts. Now there are distinct parts within the ecosystem which shows uh, or within a particular habitat which shows distinct properties or which shows uniform properties of its own. Such a subunit of a habitat is referred to as a microhabitat. So the correct answer is second option microhabitat. The second question says which of the following is a functional aspect of the ecosystem. Now most of the options given here are structural aspects however maintenance of a constant environment, maintenance of stability, maintenance of a balance in the ecosystem which is referred to as homeostasis is however a functional aspect. So the correct answer is option C that is homeostasis. The third question says which of the following are called the key industry animals. Now all of you please remember that within the trophic level within the uh, along the food chain one of the trophic levels is referred to as the key industry animals. These are the animals which convert the energy that is stored in plant biomass into the energy that is stored in the form of animal biomass and these animals are referred to as herbivores so please remember Herbivores occupy the second trophic level just above the producers and these are dependent upon the producers for their nutritional requirement and they are the ones which obtain energy from the producers in the form of plant organic matter and they conserve it in the form of secondary productivity that is flesh. So energy stored in the form of flesh is mostly in herbivores. Always remember herbivores are also referred to as the primary consumers. So herbivores are referred to as the key industry animals. Okay. The fourth question says net primary productivity energy captured is now whenever you think about energy capturing the only group of organisms along the food chain which occupy the base of the food chain which are capable of capturing energy are the green plants which are called producers. Now producers are known to capture only about 1 to 5 percent of incident radiation in order to prepare their biomass. So the correct answer is option A. One to five percent of incident radiation phosphates remain outside the natural cycle now basically phosphates are found as mineral deposits within the earth's crust that is buried in the earth and this is possible because phosphates are forming compounds with metals they are locked up in the form of metallic compounds and also sometimes phosphate may get locked up within organisms like for a, for example it may be components of bones and components of teeth so it is both option a and B that is both 1 and 2 it is in this form that phosphate remains locked up uh, in the phosphate cycle and yes of course it is not permanently locked up so it is a cycling pool whenever uh, the animal dies or whenever the organism is uh, decomposed it may be released back into the cycling or the phosphate cycle that's why it is not a permanent reservoir pool it is a cycling pool so it is both option A and option B. Energy requirement for maintenance of body with successively higher trophic level always please remember energy requirement increases however as we have already learnt the energy keeps decreasing as we go up the trophic level that follows the 10% law but the demand for the energy by the organisms or the requirement of the energy by the organism keeps increasing so it is option B. Seventh question says, let us see what assertion has to say. It says warm and moist environment can enhance the rate of decomposition which happens to be true. Warm and moist climate leads to anaerobic condition which is not entirely true. So option A that is assertion is, sorry, assertion happens to be true but reason happens to be false. So the correct answer is option C because statement assertion is correct whereas the reason saying that warm and moist climate condition creates anaerobic condition is not entirely true. So it is option C for question 7. The importance of ecosystem is 
it includes both flow of energy as well as cycling of material so the correct answer is option c it is both option a and option b the ninth question says a food chain starts with you all know that a food chain starts with those organisms which capture the energy from the radiant energy from the sun and they convert it into organic matter so obviously it has to be the producers and you all know that producers are capable of photosynthesis so it basically has uh, photosynthesizing organisms which the food chain starts with so all of you please remember photosynthesizing organisms always form the base of a food chain okay question 10 bacteria and fungi developing on dead and decaying organisms now basically these feed on dead and decaying organism this kind of nutrition is referred to as a saprophytic nutrition therefore bacteria and fungi are referred to as saprophytes so it is option c 11th question says leguminous plants are important for atmosphere because see first of all leguminous plants they help in nitrogen fixation but ultimately what do the leguminous plants do because they help in nitrogen fixation they basically enhance the fertility of the soil so the correct answer is option c they increase the fertility of the soil 12th question dense tropical forest now mostly in tropical regions you have very high temperature and associated with that you have the most or the highest annual precipitation or annual rainfall so the correct answer would be high rainfall and high temperature so that is option d the 13th question says carbon cycle includes now they're asking us to choose the logical sequence obviously we had already discussed mostly when we think of a typical food chain uh, where you have the energy from the sun being captured and you know that the first step towards carbon cycle would be uh, locking up the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere in the form of organic compound so it will always start off with a producer and then it moves on to a consumer and then it moves on to a decomposer who sends the carbon back because decomposers carry out respiration where carbon dioxide is given as a byproduct so producers take in carbon dioxide from the atmosphere and decomposers give out carbon dioxide back to the atmosphere or the reservoir pool or the cycling pool and as a result option A happens to be the logical sequence of the carbon cycle. 14th question says purifying organisms obviously purifying means those which are taking in carbon dioxide and they are giving out oxygen and you know that the green plants which belong to producer trophic level so obviously producer organisms are considered to be the purifying organisms then who are transducers exactly again we have transducers are also producers because they convert the radiant energy from the sun into chemical energy in the form of organic matter that is stored in them so they are capable of converting one form of energy into another form of energy as a result they are called transducer organisms so remember the transducer organisms in the food chain are producers so it is last option so moving on to some of the practice questions or the problems from environmental issues. Spraying of pesticide is an example for now the type of pollution which is brought forth by spraying of a pesticide or an insecticide on an agricultural field is referred to as a diffuse water pollution because it happens over a wide surface area. So the correct answer is option B. The second question says phenomenon where pollutants pass in higher concentration through the food chain that means as we travel up the food chain the concentration of a toxicant or a toxic substance or a poisonous substance keeps increasing and this is what we refer to as option A biological magnification or biomagnification so the correct answer is option A. The third question says to spread information and help on the practice of integrated organic farming. It was started by a group of farmers and if you remember it was initiated and it is even today being carried out by a farmer called Ramesh Chandra in Haryana in a place in a village called Sonipat. So it is Haryana where there is a lot of awareness about the integrated organic farming by 
uh, a farmer called Ramesh Chandra who started his own Haryana Kisan Club. So the correct answer is option A. Fourth question says temperature variation in Pacific Ocean. Now towards the uh, western Pacific Ocean along the western coast of South America you have these sudden temperature changes where the oceanic water suddenly becomes warm every once in a year and this is referred to as the El Nino effect and this is an odd climatic changes associated with the global warming and the greenhouse effect. So the correct answer happens to be the second option that is El Nino effect. Fifth question, Montreal Protocol. Now, Montreal Protocol is something to do with to reduce the substances, to reduce the emission of substances that are known to deplete the ozone layer. So, it is option C. The sixth question says, Minamata disease was caused due to consumption. Now, Minamata Bay. Now, it is named after a region called Minamata Bay in Japan. And this disease was mostly seen because a toxic chemical or, or, or a heavy metal entered into the food chain and it affected human beings. And this was due to consumption of fish that was contaminated with mercury. So, the correct answer is option B. Fish contaminated with mercury. Seventh question, photochemical smog brings about. Now, what is this photochemical smog? When pollutants react with sunlight, it results in uh, a reaction that, that is called, it is actually a secondary pollutant which contains certain toxic chemicals like ozone and peroxyacetyl nitrate. And what does this photochemical smog bring about, especially in case of plant? It causes a phenomenon called bleaching and blazing of foliage. So the correct answer happens to be the second option, bleaching and blazing of foliage. This is something uh, which talks about the detrimental effect that the photochemical smog has upon plant life. The eighth question. The first atom bomb was thrown over, was dropped over a city called Hiroshima in Japan, isn't it? So it was in the month of August in 1945, the first atomic explosion, it was uh, the atomic bomb was thrown over Hiroshima of Japan. So the correct answer is option B. Ninth question, the Environment Protection Act to protect and improve the quality of environment was passed by the government of India. So when did the government of India pass the Environment Protection Act? It was in the year 1986. So the correct answer is option D. Tenth question, biomagnification. We have learnt biomagnification with respect to DDT. We saw that it's, it, uh, it is uh, seen in an aquatic food chain. In water, the concentration of DDT is very, very negligible. It is 0 0.003 ppm and it later may go all the way up to the fish eating birds and we saw that the concentration may increase to a level of a very high concentration of 25 parts per million so it is second option is the correct answer the concentration of ddt reaches up to 25 parts per million as you all are aware the birds represent the top carnivores of the food chain of the example of the aquatic food chain that we have taken into consideration and uh, by the time it reaches the birds, the concentration of DDT has become so high, it uh, severely affects the calcium metabolism in the birds, causing thinning of eggs and premature cracking of the eggs and therefore death of the developing bird embryos. So you have learned about this in the chapter in this in this chapter. So please remember the various concentrations that you see at each trophic level in the mentioned food chain so the correct answer here is option b the 11th question says the trace gas which is produced in the rice fields and is associated with global warming now rice fields have stagnant water and therefore the soil biota as well as the roots of the plant sometimes uh, you have uh, they are put under anaerobic conditions and there is production of there is a lot of methanogens in the water and there is generation of what is referred to as the methane gas and you all know that methane gas is a, a quite a contributor to the greenhouse effect or the global warming uh, it comes only next to carbon dioxide so here the rice fields involves the production of methane which is a trace gas involved in global warming so it is option a 
Which of the following metal in water pollution causes sterility or infertility in human beings? So it is said to be manganese. Manganese is known to cause infertility or sterility in humans once it enters into the food chain and it reaches the human body. Obviously, it would reach a very high concentration and that will, that will lead to sterility or infertility. So, the correct answer is option B. The 13th question says chlorofluorocarbons or CFCs are mostly produced by we saw that CFCs were produced by aerosols and refrigerators and air conditioners and of course by jet planes so among the given options it is option B that is jet planes which are a source of chlorofluorocarbons. 14th question pollution of sulfur dioxide whenever there is lot of sulfur dioxide in the atmospheric air you know that it causes acidic rain however there are certain pollution indicators bio indicators whose growth reduces drastically in response to presence of oxides of sulfur in the air and these bio indicators are lichen so whenever you visit a polluted area where air is polluted you will not see the lichen growth on the barks of the trees however on the other side if you see lot of lichenic growth on the bark of the trees that means you know the air is relatively purer and free of pollution so the correct answer is option a 15th question ozone hole means now what exactly does ozone hole mean does it mean literally there is a hole in the atmosphere no it means that there is a decrease there is a thinning in the thickness of the ozone layer in the Dobson units that is because there is a drastic decrease in the level of ozone or the concentration of ozone in the stratosphere so the correct answer is option B okay so with this we complete the practice questions of two chapters that is ecology and environmental issues thank you